We begin with Russia's decision to stop the supply of natural gas to Poland and Bulgaria after both countries rejected Moscow's demand for payment in rubles. Now, state-owned energy major Gazprom has halted flows from the Yamal pipeline, which funnels natural gas from western Siberia to the Polish-German border. The move could trigger an energy crisis in Bulgaria because it depends on Russia for 73% of its gas supplies. Poland could also struggle as it had expected to meet half of its needs this year through these shipments. Both Warsaw and Sofia have protested the move and say they'll seek legal recourse. Bulgaria will not meet any demand that is not in accordance with the contract. We do have a contract. This contract will be observed and this is our only position. No one can blackmail Bulgaria regardless of what position they think they have. We will do everything to charge Russia with contractual penalties because this action is not legal and not contractual. European Union leaders accuse Moscow of weaponizing the energy trade and say they're working on a collective response. Let's take a look at what the EU and its allies can do to cut their reliance on Russian energy while staving off a crisis. Bulgaria plans to plug into an existing pipeline that delivers gas from Azerbaijan to Greece. It also wants to boost purchases of liquefied natural gas from Greece and Turkey. Poland is already building infrastructure to connect with pipelines from Lithuania, Slovakia and Norway. And EU officials are in talks with Qatar, Algeria and the United States to purchase LNG cargoes. The Commission will intensify its work with the so-called regional groups of member states. These regional groups of member states can provide the most immediate solidarity to each other if needed. And this will mitigate any impacts on possible gas disruptions. Second, we will continue our work to ensure sufficient gas supply and storage in the medium term. Our action plan, Repower EU, will help to significantly reduce our dependency on Russian fossil fuels. Well, let's get more on this now with independent energy analyst Neil Atkinson. He specialises in oil and gas market analysis and he joins us now from Paris. Good to have you back with us, Neil. Russia has been accused of weaponizing the energy trade, but the Kremlin says it's demanding payment in rubles because of Western sanctions. Who's right here? Is Russia holding uh, those countries who are reliant on its gas supplies hostage? I, I think that's undoubtedly the case. Although obviously it is complicated by the fact that countries such as Poland in particular uh, have been very active in organizing assistance to uh, the beleaguered uh, government and people of Ukraine. So you can sort of see where the Russians are coming from. But on the other hand, as the Polish official and even more vehemently the Bulgarian official that you, sh uh, you showed a few moments ago have made it very clear, they have contracts. They are willing to pay for the contracted supplies of Russian gas. They expect those uh, supplies to be delivered. Uh, and uh, there we are. We have an impasse. We have a standoff. Uh, in the meantime, uh, what is very impressive and perhaps more impressive than most people expected is that the European Union is working flat out, working very, very hard to try to organize alternative supplies for the individual countries. Uh, it's doing everything it can to prepare for the long haul, for the possibility that further disruption to Russian supplies will take place and will be maintained for some months to come. So it's a, a very fast-moving situation, uh, and we're going to see a lot of uh, turbulence in the next few weeks. Well, that's right, because uh, Poland and Bulgaria are now scrambling to find alternative sources of natural gas. Where should they be looking, and is there enough to fill that void left by Russia? Well, th this is the question of whether it's going to be enough, although what is a very, very helpful factor is that we're engaged now in this, alternative, in this search for alternative supplies at the end of the winter heating season. So demand uh, falls for very obvious seasonal reasons at this time of year. Uh, so no heating requirement or very little heating requirement, although, of course, industry uh, still continues to require large volumes of gas to operate normally. So yes, there, are, there, are, there is a scramble. Uh, as you showed a few moments ago, there is the possibility of the Bulgarians uh, tapping into uh, an Azerbaijan to, to Greece pipeline, 
The Poles, meanwhile, are doing the best they can to organize additional supplies of LNG. They have an LNG uh, uh, regasification terminal uh, on, the, uh, on the, the Baltic Sea coast. So there is, uh, there is a major effort to find alternative supplies. And you, we've mentioned Qatar. We've mentioned the United States as a possible source of increased LNG shipments. There's also going to be more pipeline gas coming into Europe from, for example, Norway over the next few months. So extra supply will be available, but it's almost certain that it is going to cost a lot more money because there are other regions of the world, Asia, for example, which is a very fast growing market for natural gas. They will continue to need supplies for their operations. So yes, there can be more supply and there almost certainly will be more supply to Europe, but it will come at a cost. The European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen has warned EU members not to bend to Russia's demand to pay in rubles. But we know that the payment deadlines for gas contracts are, are going to be due sometime next month. Do you believe that uh, Europe can survive without uh, Russian gas ultimately? Well, uh, without Russian gas at all very quickly, then that is hugely problematic. There are countries such as Austria, Czech Republic and others who are 80, 85, 90 percent dependent on supplies of Russian gas for their normal operations. And uh, so it's therefore not surprising to see that some countries have decided that they will uh, comply with the Russian demand to make payments in rubles. And there does seem to be a, a sort of a gray area about the legality of this. Does it actually breach sanctions or not? Uh, in the short term, I think one has to be extremely sympathetic to the situations of some of those countries that are highly dependent on Russia. Uh, and if we, but if we can get through this short term period, come up with alternative supplies, then I think the, the worst of the crisis uh, can, or the worst possibility of the crisis can be averted. But as I said earlier, it is going to come as a cost. And it's not just the cost, it's the actual physical logistics of getting gas into markets which are normally supplied from Russia because pipelines, you know, they don't spring up overnight uh, and storage facilities aren't created overnight. So there are a lot of logistical challenges, but it looks as if the European Union uh, is certainly up for that challenge. Okay, Neil Atkinson, really good to get your analysis as always. Thank you again for joining us.